Hey man, it's going down. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. We got a very special guest in the house, man. Listen, Young Cat been putting it down, man. Making a whole lot of noise, man. Big waves, you know what I'm saying? Representing the North Side, you know what I mean? Representing for the for the uh, for the Mexicans, you know what I'm saying? Real, uh, real dope. You know what I'm saying? Ain't got a cool personality. I just told him before we started, just from chopping it up. I said, man, you might one of my new favorite rappers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Bo Bundy, man, what's going down, man? What's up, fine? Just here chilling, bro. Just vibing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's the deal, man? Shit, I appreciate you coming through, man. Shit, appreciate you having me. I know you've been trying to get this locked in, bro. I just kind of like, I'm very, uh, I just like being private, really, you know? So it's, I don't really like it. I don't even know if I'm speaking high enough right yeah, now. Yeah, nah, you good. You I good. feel like Ricky Bobby. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro, it's just chilling, you know, out here just living and shit. Yeah, so, so what's new with you, man? Uh, shit, bro, just working on a bunch of new music, working on the albums, just kind of focusing on myself a lot lately, so. You say focusing on, focusing on yourself, what you mean? Just, you know, just trying to be a better person, bro. I feel like, you know, if you don't take certain breaks and time to actually just kind of focus on yourself, you kind of lose yourself in this shit. So, you know, I've just been traveling, eating good, doing shit I like to do, you know, just trying to kind of stay in touch with myself, you know, and take a break from everything. Yeah, yeah. Man, you've been able to, uh, to I mean, do a lot, you know what I mean? And what it seems like a short period of time. Like, when would you say you first started, like, kind of getting out there and putting music out? Uh, like I said, I told you before we started this, like, I was in high school, but it was kind of like maybe like 2016, like a year after I graduated. I ain't really had shit going for myself. I was really, like, I didn't go to college. I didn't get into college. I was dropped out of high school. I was dropped out of high school. I eventually graduated, but I dropped out like six fucking times, bro. <laughs> so, you know what to say, seven times the charm. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, bro, it was kind of like, uh, uh, I didn't want to get my GED, but uh, eventually I was working for the old field, and the old field went to shit in 2015. And I was just at home chilling, so I was like, man, fuck it, let me just go ahead and fucking get this fucking high school diploma. And I went back, and I got like the least, like I barely fucking did it. And then after that, I went back to construction. And I was just doing that, and I didn't really feel like, I knew like I wanted more, because I've always been very creative, and like my creativity, like I do feel like it's unmatched, my vision. And it was like one of those things where I wasn't fulfilled with myself. Like it was just, it seemed like a routine. Every day I'm waking up, doing the same shit, going to work, getting home, sleeping, and the same shit, I knew I wanted more. So I kind of just told my, my bro Vassett, I was like, hey man, we gotta, we gotta set the shit up notch. So at one point, like I was making music, going to college full time and working construction full time. Like I wasn't sleeping for like mm. four or five years. Mm. Wait, wait, but you was you were into uh, cause you're into like trucks and all that stuff, right? Yeah, that's but my you shit. but you been into that though, bro. Since I was a kid, like my dad would build like old ass Chevys. So we had like the '72 Chevy, uh, and then my brother in law really got me into it. He was uh. He would do like truck shows and shit like that. So I would go with him, like, you know, you'll wake up like at 5 a.m. to sit in line for hours just to get in and you see all these shirt, like these trucks. And uh, eventually I started making my own bread. So I started like trying to build my own shit. But it wasn't really working because, you know, like I had other bills and other shit that I had to pay off. Like co- college is fucking expensive, bro. Like that's a fucking scam. Like how am I going to pay for a class and a book? <laughs> like, you yeah, know, like. Yeah. And you were paying for yourself, no loans, no nothing. Nah, no. fuck that. I mean, I was just community college. It wasn't really like taking out the big ass loan. So I was making good enough construction money to like pay myself through college. And then eventually, my the company I was working for, they were great people. They're like, look, if you bring me all A's like this semester, I'll reimburse you whatever you spent. Hmm. I was going to school for construction management and civil engineering. So like, they they kind of saw it as an investment. Like, let's push them through school. And he'll just be, he'll stay working with us. Because I was a project manager for a construction company. I did not expect this interview to go like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember, a lot of people tell me this shit. Like, I just, I'm like, I just be doing side missions, bro. Like, I'm just out here. I've lived like a, my life's just been everywhere with everything. It's, good. it's a completely different thing from what you got going on right now. So, okay, so then you transition into the rap thing. Yeah, well, basically, like, I started, like, doing music. And it started like popping off. This is why you're project manager. Well, yeah. Well, I was like going, so I would like party all fucking day, do concerts, then wake up five a.m. 
and go business meetings, pre-bids, do all kinds of shit, job inspections, talk to engineers, and shit like that. And it was like, it started getting weird when, like, people started noticing me at these job sites. Like, hey, you're there. I'm like, hey, bro, chill. You know, like, they don't know. Were you already Bo Bundy or you were still? I was Bo Bundy, yeah. Hmm. So, Bo Bundy started when I started taking it seriously, like, maybe, like, 2015. And then 2016 is when it started, like, catching on. But, like, people at the job sites, like, you know, most construction sites are predominantly Hispanic people. They're like, you're that fucking guy. I'm like, yo, bro, chill. You know, <laughs> like, they don't know about this life, bro. I feel like Hannah Montana and shit, bro. <laughs> and uh, eventually, like, I was getting to a point where, like, I had to tell my bosses, like, hey, bro, I'm letting you know, like, this is what I do on the weekends. And, you know, like, just so they wouldn't see it like a surprise. But they were hella supportive, bro. Like, they'll give me a day off so I can go have a show in Austin. And even, like, one time, they sponsored, like, all the beer from my, like, album release party. No shit. I I'm hella grateful for them. I generally do feel like I wouldn't be able to do it, like, without their support during those days when I needed it. Damn, bro. Yeah. I, I just, I, I didn't expect all this. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I didn't know this was going to be a story, man. This is a trip. Not not yeah. to not to say that I thought it was going to be this or that. I yeah, just didn't expect just... that this was going to be... No shit, bro. So okay, when does it when does it come to a point where you're like, all right, I gotta walk away from the job? So it was basically like it was working. I was making good money. I dropped that Uno code with Chingo, and it did it did some noise, and I was getting booked faster and more shows. You still had the job with the Chingo Bling record, huh? You were still working with the Chingo Bling record? Yeah. So it's like I I dropped I dropped the Chingo Bling. Well, the thing about it is that like even like now I feel like I can still kind of go work construction. Cause it's like Monday through Wednesdays. I don't really get busy till like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So like those first three days, bro, I'm literally just bullshitting. I'm sleeping all day. I'm playing PS Five and shit. And so sometimes I'm just like, man, I could be making extra money with this shit. Like, so that's why. But, but how did you link up with Chingo Bling? Like, how you starting to meet? Like, just to just. He had a Chingo de Mayo fest in Houston, and I pulled up, and then uh, because. My friend Speak, I don't know if he speaks, he's a rapper from LA. Mm -hmm. He be going hard as fuck. Like he's a he a real real rapper type shit. And uh, he actually wrote that Gucci Gucci for Crayshon or Oh no shit. Yeah. So uh yeah, he was like, Yo bro, I'm in I'm in your city, like pull up, let me bring you out for a song or something. I'm like, Yeah, bro, for sure. So I pull up and at first Chingo's kinda like he's weird about it. He's like, Hey, who are you? I'm like, Hey bro, I'm 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 on stage with this guy, you know. I mean, it's normal, you know. You so I go on stage. I rock the fuck out this fucking like the wherever he. It was at, like I think like Eighth Eighth Wonder Brewery. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, after that, Jingle comes up to me. He's like, "Yo, bro, we gotta work." Da da da. He gives me his number, and uh, we drop a song for my album at the time, and it was alright. It was more like just for the culture type shit. And then I remember I was on a cruise and they were playing the fuck out that Una does and the though. Mm -hmm. and I was like fuck I hate this fucking song, and uh, my buddy was like bro why don't you like just freestyle over it, and I was like fuck that he was like come on he put on the instrumental like while we're on the fucking boat, and I freestyled the whole song, and he recorded he's like yeah that shit was fire bro you should as soon as we get off the boat go record that shit, so I was like all right so we get we get home like two days later. I go to my the studio, and um, I record it, and I send it to Chingo. I'm like, hey, bro, what do you think about this, you know? And he's like, yo, call me right now, bro. Like, And he, I call him. He's like, book an extra hour, book an extra two. Like, I'm on my way. Hmm. Like, I need to get on this. I'm like, all right, bet. So he pulls up. We record the fucking, the whole thing. Send it to my video guy. He calls me. He's like, bro, we got to shoot the video for this. So I was like, all right, bet. So I didn't know where the fuck to shoot it at, so I hit up my homeboy down the street at 16 wheels and tires. And I'm like, yo, we got to shoot a video, bring all the fucking trucks and this and that. And we shot the video in like a fucking hour. Put so y'all did all this in the same day? No, nah, it was like maybe like a week process. I'm just skipping. Yeah. It. But it was like in a week. And uh, yeah, so we dropped the video as soon as it's fucking done. And boom, it has like a fucking million views like right away. And I'm like, oh shit, you know. And Was fucking, it your first like going into that space yeah like the i think like the most i had here was maybe like <clears throat> two hundred fifty thousand, maybe like three hundred thousand, and then uh so it hit the million i was like oh shit, you know but i was still kind of like i was weirded out that my first million was a song that's not my song hmm. like no matter how hard you go that would never be your song so um fucking 
it, it kind of just went on for a few months. And it was like, I was just getting booked for that fucking song. And I was just like, yo, like, I rap way harder than this shit, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, you don't want to be the, the one song guy. Yeah, bro. I don't want to be the one song guy. Danny Houston. Danny Houston. Danny Houston.